Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the next Message Ops webinar. We're going to be talking about an exciting new product, Inscape. And with me, I have Chris Pyle. Say hi, Chris. Hello, Kevin. How are you? And Robin is here with us also. Good afternoon, everyone. And Melissa, you should be out there in uh, Never Never Land. <laughs> Hello, everybody. And there they are. Um, just want to do a little housekeeping before Chris kicks this off. If you want to ask questions along the way, there is a question slot on your go to my webinar application please plug it in there we'll try to answer them as we go along um, and make sure that we get to them as quickly as possible um, anything else that you have for us just let us know we are recording this and you will be sent a link to the recording and a copy of chris's presentation with that i'm going to hand it over to chris Pyle. great thank you kevin good afternoon everybody and um, welcome to our webinar um, I wanted to, first of all, thank all of you for your business and your continued support. Uh, the Message Ops platform right now has about 2,300 individual clients utilizing the platform, producing about between 10 to 25,000 transactions a month of people doing ads, changes, and removals to and from uh, the Microsoft Cloud. So we really appreciate what uh, you guys are doing for us, the business you're giving us, and more than anything too, uh, the sense of community. Uh, we really appreciate the input, the advice, and the counsel that you continuously give us uh, to make this platform the best that it can be. Um, so today, uh, I'm happy to announce we're launching Inscape. Inscape, um, at the end of the day, uh, is really going to be the SaaS operations management platform, that it's really going to enhance the engagement layer between you, the IT professional, and all the SaaS applications that are available in the marketplace. We thought we'd start off with the most popular one being Microsoft Office 365, and I think we're up to about 1,700 line items now, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so we got about 1,700 line items. We started off with 200. We're now up to 1,700 Microsoft line items you can purchase online. But Kevin, let's build this out. So the first thing that we've done really is we've created Inscape, this SaaS management platform. We've opened up our APIs, and why is that important? This is what's going to allow us to connect to all the other SaaS applications in the marketplace. It's a RESTful API. So the reason I bring this up to you is many of you had said that, you know what, SaaS is becoming a major part of our business. And, you know, some cases it's 40% of the applications. And when you're onboarding or offboarding a new employee, the ability to not only assign them Office 365 licensure, but maybe it's a Zoom license, or maybe it's Adobe, or maybe it's Box or Dropbox. Many of you have said, look, can you make this one uh, platform for us to do that? And that is the vision of what we're going to do. And today is the first step of that journey. Um, so really what we've done in Inscape, we really have streamlined uh, provisioning uh, of the licensures for right now with Microsoft, but that will be moving over to others. Um, the Inscape platform, we've also have really enhanced our training opportunities to make sure that you're unleashing the business value of your Office 365 investment. We've taken our disparate adoption platform and have now moved that under the umbrella of Inscape, which Robin's gonna demonstrate for you in just a little while. Uh, but again, giving you that one end user portal uh, that they can go to for all things Office 365 and Microsoft 365. Um, as I said earlier, we've increased our marketplace offerings just within Microsoft from a few hundred to uh, almost 2,000 uh, different line item SKUs that you can now purchase. But again, that marketplace is going to enhance as we bring on other SaaS applications. And with that in mind, please talk to us about what SaaS applications you would like to see um, as part of the Inkscape management platform. Uh, we have dramatically streamlined the onboarding and offboarding process uh, with the hire to retire 
as you are bringing people on or releasing them from your organization. That has been a big thing. We have worked uh, a, a lot with you all to help us build out templates uh, and to be able to really streamline that. We're going to do a, an overview of that as well. The Inscape platform has really gone above and beyond in, to streamline and improve the management. Uh, we really want to make sure that this thing is uber easy uh, so that you don't need level three or level four people uh, you know, doing uh, what we think you know, a level one person could do. Uh, we want to make it easier and, and streamline that. Um, uh, we've enhanced the reporting. Many of you, thank you so much, have uh, shared some great PowerShell scripts with us to in, in keep in, you know, increasing the reports. Keep those coming. If you guys got some PowerShell scripts that you're like, man, I could really use this in a you know, good looking GUI, um, great. Get it over to us. We'll help you with that. Um, this was a big, big thing. And Robin is going to review this all of you, and I'm not saying one or two, almost all of you said you have to do a better job of billing and invoicing and being able for us to you know, look into the invoice, the ability to tag Azure resources, the ability for us to do some cost management uh, among departments and such. Uh, we've taken some pretty big strides uh, forward on this, and it's only going to get better, and Robin's going to show you a little bit about what we're starting off with. Um, and we also have also increased our support uh, where uh, we have nothing but good things we always hear from you guys, but we're increasing our support and the ability to communicate and collaborate with us online. Um, we are also have the opportunity now, uh, for those of you who know who are working with us with ServiceNow, uh, we have created some very uh, unique workflows uh, that assists ServiceNow customers because we integrate fully into ServiceNow with their onboarding and offboarding. We've created some great workflows uh, that will pop right in as well as with those customers um, we have connected into ADP. So if you're looking, if you're using ADP, what their product is Workforce now, and you want to be able to streamline the whole onboarding or offboarding through ADP or ServiceNow, we now have that capability and we'd love to show you what we can do with that uh, within the platform. Um, the other thing that you asked us to do was to build some network management. Um, so I just want to let you know really what you're asking for is, hey, if there's latency, can you tell me if it's behind my firewall? Is it out? Is it at Azure? Where, where's the challenge? So we heard what you said. We're in development where we're going to be doing, um, you know, some, you know, uh, synthetic transactions uh, amongst the network uh, to see how that is working. Um, and this is just a quick little screenshot. You're going to see a lot more of this, but we have listened to what you said and tried to bring everything in under one uh, umbrella where you can go ahead and manage uh, uh, just about everything from one screen. So Robin, are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So we're going to go ahead and transfer this over to Robin, uh, who is going to work on uh, you know the, a, a quick demonstration. And again, if you need more in depth, please reach out to Melissa, reach out to any of us, and we'll be glad to you know, handhold you right through all of this. So take it away there, Rob. Great, thank you, Chris. Um, everybody should see my screen right now. And I am logged in uh, as an Inkscape user with my Office 365 credential. So everything is single sign-on with your existing Office 365 credential. And there is a one-time setup. The first time you're logging, a global admin from your tenant will need to um, set up the account. URL will be sent at the end of this call if you haven't already set up your account. I know Melissa has sent out many communications recently, and hopefully uh, some of you are already on the platform. So, Robin, so there is a step that we need our, our members to take, right? And that exactly. is to log on. Yes. The first time you're logged in uh, to Inkscape, Microsoft will ask for your consent uh, for the application. And so a global admin must do that one time. So here I am at the customer view of Inkscape. So I am the global admin of this test tenant. And you can see right off the bat, I have several uh, tiles. Each tile has its own feature. And I will go through each of the tiles. The first one I'm going to look at is the Microsoft license tile. Okay, Microsoft license tile is what most of you would know as our CSP boss application. Okay. Here, 
on this tab is the licensing view of my subscriptions as a customer, uh, demo customer here. I only have a few subscriptions. You might see more. Now, right off the bat, this is a big improvement from our CSP Boss site. We now have your available license count listed with each subscription. It is clickable. If you'd like to go ahead and assign those six, uh, one of the six, you can click into the name, add the user. It's connected with your Azure Active, Active Directory. I can add this license to Alex and go ahead and assign it. Wow, that's easy because I know a lot of people were, were, you know, challenging us to make it simpler and show, hey, before I go out and buy more licenses, can you please tell me if I have any available and be able to assign those? So again, thank you for your feedback as we try to make this easier for you. So that, that's fantastic. Exactly. And that's what we're trying to accomplish here. And I hope we did succeed in the fact that we don't need to buy another license. I have six right. to go ahead and assign. Perfect. You'll see we have uh, the licenses broken out um, into multiple tabs. So there's actually a subscription tab for your Azure subscriptions and uh, software, Microsoft software. Uh, this demo account doesn't have one, but it, you would see things like a uh, Windows Server or SQL Server or the Windows 7 ex, uh, extended security upgrade. Which there is a lot of you who have ordered that Windows 7 ex ESU, that extended security update. So uh, we're here to help you if you need to migrate to Windows 10, but that, that's right. great stuff. <laughs> So if there's something that you want to buy that's not on the list, uh, the plus sign over here or the shop license will open up exactly what it says, shop license. So now I can go ahead and find uh, my license that I need, click on it, it'll tell me the price, the monthly price, and as I make an increase, it'll do my math for me, right? And this is how you're going to purchase new subscriptions. Got it. So it's very much like the uh, CSP boss, but we're just going to come in from a different angle. So Inscape licenses, where are you going to be doing that? Correct. Now, you also have an assign tab that you can click into, and I have it set up here. And this feature has been enhanced, right? Now we have a graph chart here for you to see your available and your assigned licenses nice is you can be select assign and now you can see all of the licenses that are available that have not been assigned to users again trying to get you to see that you don't need to make a purchase you might have some available you could also decrease the quantities that you're not using to save money Robin while we're waiting we have several questions that popped up if you don't mind maybe we can just address those as they come up sure. uh, the first one is from Doug Horton uh, thanks Doug for joining uh, invoice history page I noticed yesterday that my January invoice is now posted with the office 365 and Azure combined question is the invoice no longer being emailed as in the past I haven't received any email yet with the invoice Great question, Doug. Trust me, we want your money and we are <laughs> going to make sure that we invoice you. So yes, you will be receiving uh, uh, an email uh, along with a PDF. We did have several clients, uh, when we sent it out, we were sending a PDF out with a zip file that had all the intimate details behind the PDF. Uh, several of you uh, commented that please don't send any zip files because uh, our users have been trained not to open them because of virus. So what we're going to do, Doug, is we're going to send out the email with a, just a PDF that breaks down the Azure, breaks down your Office 365. And if you want detail, we'll then bring you back to Inkscape where uh, we're going to show you in a second how you can get the detail. Hope that answers your question. Yes, exactly. And, and Doug, um, I'm going to check into your account to make sure that you are set up to receive that invoice. Um, because the emails uh, did go out, and um, I will check on yours personally to make sure that you're listed. Great. Thank you, Doug. David K., if we already have access to the older Inkscape365.com, will that carry over to the new this new combined site? Yes, exactly. Um, this tile, this manage tile, is uh, Inkscape365, so you can access it now by clicking uh, the manage, right? Mm -hmm. You'll be prompted uh, to confirm your account. And if you already have an account set up, uh, you'll be brought right in. Uh, you can still use your other bookmark, but we would prefer that you, you start here in the Inkscape platform to navigate. 
Uh, for any clients that are on the call that do not have an Inkscape 365 account already set up, um, please know that you can set up your account free of charge. It's included as part of your uh, our value add to you as a, our client. And uh, once it's set up, you can access it through here in Inkscape. If you have any questions, Melissa can help you get that set up. Excellent. I hope that answers your question, but thanks, David. Carla, will you be adding other services that we get for you, such as iron scales and infra scales? Yes, Carla, that is exactly what we want. We, uh, like I said, we opened up the API and we're going to be doing more of these um, as a service type of things, such as the iron scales, the infra scales, and other SaaS applications, uh, you know, just give us a little time as we are working with these vendors to bring this all in under one view. Uh, but yes, Carla, thank you so much for asking. Okay, why don't we go ahead, Robin, and let's keep going here. Yep, so we were at the assign, and um, again, we have a graph at the top to help you see the assign and um, available licenses. And now you can also, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll play with, we have Chris Pyle here. Of course. Um, we can manage his license. So we'll, we'll take back that F1 and uh, give him the Azure Active Directory perhaps, right? Mm -hmm. You could also on this page, you can see if there's any other service plans uh, and, and how that F1 service um, is made up, right? So if you could unselect planner if you didn't want your user to have access to planner. So all of this is right here inside our Inkscape platform. And again, that was uh, from a request from a few of you to saying, look, we don't wanna, we wanna give them F1, but we don't wanna support planner. So let's just turn it off before even it, give it to them. So these are again, have come from you, uh, the user community. So thank you and keep the uh, suggestions coming. Great. You can also do an add user. Um, again, this add user is, um, is an, a cloud only user. So please, um, you know, be aware of your synchronization if you have a hybrid or DirSync environment, okay? And I know many of you have asked about, you know, a hybrid and doing a hybrid management, um, and we are diligently working on that. Will you be able to manage not only your Azure AD, but you also be able to manage your on-premise AD? Um, that has been a major request. Um, we are building it as we speak um, to make sure that uh, we you know, address everything you've asked for. Great, and so uh, to uh, touch on Doug's question uh, from earlier, the invoice history. Uh, this invoice history tab is going to show you your history uh, since we began uh, billing through Inkscape. So for the majority of you, you'll have invoices starting with January. This again is my test account, so I have a couple of months. If I want to see the details of that his, of that invoice, say for January, I can click onto the zip file. From here, you'll see my PDF, right? That's my PDF invoice. And then the CSV files, uh, depending on the services that you, that you do receive from us, uh, you'll have the details uh, of that, how that uh, total came about. So for this test account, it's Office 365. You may also have an Azure file. You'll have a um, a marketplace file. Now that was something that I know everybody that has an Azure subscription was asking every month for. So we want to make sure that you're aware that you can now access this data on demand uh, through our Inkscape platform. Right. So you can click in there. A lot of you, especially on the Azure side, we're saying, look, can you break a PD, uh, break the PDF invoice out to Office 365 and then Azure and then software, uh, et cetera. And then give us the ability then to go in to that Excel spreadsheet and then be able to uh, manipulate that spreadsheet uh, and tag it. So basically like in Azure, you can use Azure tags and tag the operating uh, systems, the workloads, the storage, the network uh, by department, by city or whatever else you would like to do in there. Um, and so you, you can do that. And um, it's been something that has been asked of us. Hopefully uh, this is gonna answer the question. So we thought the best way to do it is just to bring it into a, a, a Excel file where you can manipulate it to your heart's content uh, on how that will uh, be, it will go. Um, Keith Ritchie asked, will you give us the ability to put licenses users into different cost centers? Basically, we have many different cost centers in our company, and it would be helpful for the monthly bill to be broken out by cost center. You don't need to answer this as a group. Just let me know. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Keith, it's absolutely on our radar. And as a matter of fact, uh, Robin is going to show you 
uh, our, our new um, our new management uh, platform, the, right the new reporting mm -hmm. platform, which we're going to demonstrate in just a few minutes, that you'll see that we're heading down that uh, that alleyway, Keith. Yes. Um, but yes, we are heading in that direction. We'll show you, and hopefully you'll like where we're going with it. Right. So on the invoice uh, tile, uh, besides invoice history, you'll also have access to your billing information. This is uh, where if you'd like to check uh, who's receiving your invoice uh, you, and the address that is listed on the invoice, you can make that modification now yourself. You can have up to five people receive uh, the invoice um, and feel free to, to update this yourself or if you want us to uh, do it on your behalf, please just give us a call. Yeah, and so Robin, I know probably some people might be asking, so if you want the, this is the billing information if you want to get sent to your accounts payable department, but they do have, we do have our back, right, role-based access controls that the the person's not going to be from accounting will be able to go in and start manipulating the exactly. office 365 exactly so today uh, one of the uh, next steps that we're going to ask all of you on the on the call to once you've signed up and you're in in inscape um, please come into the invoice tab go to user roles and please add your accounts payable uh, personnel here in this tile and then they'll have access to the invoice as well if they needed to ever pull it up or get the details so by default, they're not going to have access to this. You, as the global administrator, will need to give them the access. But they won't have access to anything else. Exactly. They'll just have access to this one tile. They'll see their invoice history and their billing information. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So now we get over to Azure Spending. So Azure Spending is for our customers that have an Azure subscription through us. So I have a different test account that will pull up because it has an Azure subscription. You'll see here, we're giving you uh, your, your, your subscription spend. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm filtered to the month of December, and I have two subscriptions. So I have it broken out by my subscription name, but I can pick, uh, you know, if I want to look at the resource name, or I can look at uh, the service type, right? Maybe I only have one type of service. Um, but you'll be able to, to filter and manipulate this data as you wish. Again, this you'll see also has a user role. So you can add the users in your organization that it makes sense to see this detail. And again, we only have a small, uh, you know, Azure uh, subscription here for this demo, but you know, it does scale to whatever you would like, and you can download it as a CSV or a PDF. The other thing I will say is that within six weeks, we are again working with the community. Uh, we're going to have some real, real interesting um, reporting. Uh, to really assist in the cost management uh, of Azure, because uh, we know if 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 gone unmanaged, uh, it can quickly get out of control. Uh, so we have been spending quite a few months here developing uh, what we believe is going to be some great opportunities uh, to highlight ways to save money, come back to some strong suggestions. Uh, re regarding security and, and the like. So stay tuned. Uh, this is just the beginning of uh, what we have coming. Exactly. Thank you, Chris. And so we have the Azure spending, and then we also have the Azure recommendations. And again, these, these are two pages that are going to be enhanced almost immediately uh, from this launch. Uh, we just had so much we wanted to put into it, but this is our uh, step one of getting you your Azure recommendations. Yeah, so hopefully we're heading in the right direction. I know that some of you might not be as fast as we you would like to see it, but we are heading in that direction uh, to be able to support your Azure environments. Again, giving you suggestions from high, you know, high availability, security, performance, cost, et cetera. But we're going to get a lot more in depth in that. Right. And um, one thing, excuse me, I did not show Chris the invoice future, right? The future of our new our invoice page here. So we have the invoice history, but we're going to be improving that in in the next few weeks. Yes, I mean this. You, you uh, all of you uh, will receive this. This is a recap of the, your 2019 spend uh, for Office 365. You'll just see we have the beginning seat count, uh, the beginning monthly bill, what the seat count ended uh, in 2019, and what your bill was at the end of 2019. So just a recap. Uh, with the month that it started, um, et cetera. But we really like this, and the, the opinion is, is that this would be great if we could have that on that invoice history tile, 
um, to be able to pull something up like this and be able to see it in this visual representation in addition to having the deep dive zip file where you can manipulate it through Excel. So this will be done uh, very shortly. Um, keep an eye out. You'll be getting this uh, in this, this recap for your account for the 2019 year, uh, probably tomorrow or the next day. Onto the manage tile. Again, we've touched on this. This is the Inscape 365 application that you are aware of. I'm going to click into it, but um, if you don't have an account, again, please go ahead and register for one. I think uh, the information in here, um, we, we wouldn't be able to touch on everything in this one hour. So um, we will go through a few of the high things. Um, one of the main things we love to show is this user provisioning and deprovisioning wizard. So from here, you can provision a user. Uh, we, again, we have some basic information. What, what we like to show is our templates, right? We're very proud of our templates. We can have a, a template predefined. Yes, and this is where a lot of you've come up and said, hey, let me create a template that you know, gives the, you know, the job template, uh, where, what the department is, what the title is, what location the job template for, the template is for. You describe one time the client access methods, the exchange properties, whether you want you know, the certain job uh, role to be have auditing enabled, archive enabled. You can define the mailbox retention policies, address book policies. You can do your mailbox regional configurations um, and uh, et cetera. Um, we also said with this job role, you can move over and assist with uh, distribution and security groups. You can assign everybody there, shared mailboxes, selected teams, channels that you want to assign them to. So this is really, really good stuff. Um, and we see a lot of you using this. Now, some of you uh, have said, well, Chris, you know, it's great, but we need our Active Directory. You know, we're running that uh, on-prem, so it, it's really not that much of help. We hear what you're saying for those users who are on-prem. Um, uh, uh, as I said earlier, we are right now working uh, and we will be having the hybrid management. Will You'll be able to uh, use this uh, tool. So it's absolutely uh, going to be there. Oh, I see Carla Keeney just asked, does this provisioning use work with hybrid environment? Not yet, but it, we're definitely working on it. Is in, you know, we're running in two week sprints. Uh, it's definitely on the sprint board. Uh, and I know I, they're working on it. That's just the way it is, but it's taking a little longer than two weeks to get it done, but it, it's definitely on there. Um, oh, Brian Sullivan asked a question. Hey, Brian, thanks. Thanks. Has this T PST export been looked at? Lots of issues with this not working correctly. Um, yeah, so we fixed a tremendous amount of the problems, but um, recently uh, we've seen over the past, in particular, past two days, something has something has gone awry with that, Brian. Uh, a lot, a lot of people are using the PST export, uh, but over the past two days, we've seen quite a bit of um, some challenges. So we're, we're we're trying to get into that and um, find out what that is, Brian, because uh, we know how how everybody really likes that PSD export feature. So uh, I will tell you, we're looking into it and I apologize for the uh, any challenges this has caused. So here, oh wait, okay. So this is gonna go back up to Keith Ritchie here. So Keith, get ready, man, here we go. Uh, so this is the new dashboard that all of you asked for. Um, because you said, man, you got a lot of great information here, but can you help me, you know, let's, let's, let's move it around. So this is gonna be out in beta soon. But here, Keith, if you look, if you go into cost management, you click on that and right here, right, it automatically we tell you, here's how much you're spending right now on your total license cost. And right there, we shout at you, here's how many unassigned licenses that you own uh, immediately. And then if you go down, we can go ahead and start uh, doing license percentage assigned. And then we can come in by license by filter and we'll be able to um, come in here, and this is where, and again, we're still in development here, but this is where you know, you'll be able to come in here and do a license filter by department. You can do a license filter by city, by location. Um, you know, we have it split up many, many different ways, uh, but we think that this is you know, a good thing that we're bringing out we have blocked users with licenses, inactive users past 30, 60, 90 days. So the ability to do a cost management assessment, um, you know, right from this one tab, we think is going to be very helpful. 
And then the same thing with the security management. Um, we have a lot of stuff in there, uh, but we are just making it easier to consume uh, and digest um, for, for our customers to be able to uh, proactively um, you know, look at that. Strong passwords required, passwords set never to expire, who's forwarding their mailboxes internally, externally, anonymous IP events, you know, unfamiliar location events, um, et cetera, et cetera. Who's got MFA, you know, users with MFA disabled, et cetera, et cetera, all in one easy screen from there. So hopefully that will come in. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, you're welcome, Keith, thanks. So, our next tile in our Inkscape platform is adoption, which many of you may not have known that we had. Right? So let me click on adoption. And this is free of charge, no extra fee. Uh, what, what's great about this is that we have a, a knowledge base for you as the IT professional to come in when your users are asking you questions. You can come here to the support butler and ask it a question, right? So yeah, how do I change the color of my calendar? Uh, you can ask that question because we know your help desk a lot. So this comes out and says, great, do you want to change your appearance of your calendar? You want to change the background of your calendar? You know, what, what do you mean by change the color of your, uh, of your calendar? So we give you a few selections to choose from. Basically what we've done is we've created like a search engine across three Microsoft knowledge bases, support, answers, and then the third one, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but these are certified Microsoft answers. It's not somebody from, you know, some foreign country or something that's, you know, thinking, to, you know, doing it on the weekends or something, but these are certified answers. But a lot of you, when you uh, came to us, we, we were talking and you were saying, look, we, we don't have a centralized place that all of our end users can go to for all things Office 365. So we made this portal like for the quick start guides, you can access all the quick start guides. We have tremendous amount of videos in here. But um, here is where we also, you can set up you know, within here what you want your end users to see. And not only that, but like for I said, if you don't use Microsoft Visio, you can just simply unclick Microsoft Visio or video or whatever it is that you don't want, and we'll take all of those out of the adoption guide. Um, but we also then send tips and tricks of how to get the most out of the Office 365 environment. So we don't send them directly to your end users. We will send them up to six people in your company. And what many of you are doing then is turning around and then sending them out to your end user community uh, uh, on, you know, from, from the IT or from the training manager or whatever it might be. Um, but it's really good stuff there uh, because it's going to be a constant evolution and a constant updates of uh, emails uh, that talk about how to unleash the business value uh, and help you with the change management and the adoption of the product. And Raman, can you show them just real quick how it looks? Because you can have this dropped in the um, email uh, Outlook ribbon. And here, yeah, and this is an email, but just to let you know, you can just go over right there at the top where it says email introduction, email introduction. Yeah. Um, um, and if you open that up, and what we can do is we can set this up in a GPO, a group policy, um, and we can push it out until all of your users, you can have people do it individually. But you'll notice here when you bring it up, you'll see that this is now, you can drop it right into the ribbon of your end users where they can click into that and have a nice portal for all things Office 365. They got questions regarding Sway, Teams, anything, you know, the Office 365, what we're calling the adoption portal, uh, will be there to assist them with the support butler, self-service uh, help desk, as well as the training videos, as well as uh, uh, adoption and quick start guides um, and all types of things. So this is, a, a, again, a, a great um, opportunity, uh, again, for IT, you guys to show that, hey, look, we got a nice portal, um, you know, for things to help with the adoption and consumption of the investments that your business has made. Thank you. So if you don't already have adoption set up for your company, please go ahead and click on this icon, get your account set up. And if there's any questions, Melissa can help um, address those one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. We already, 
looked at the Azure recommendations. Um, moving along, we have our ADP workforce now and our eBridge ServiceNow integration. Yeah, so again, for those of you who are interested in that, please give us a call. This is not included, this is an optional. If you want us to integrate into those systems, uh, we have uh, created the programming pattern, the APIs to make that happen. Yes, so if you click on the tile, you'll be brought to a form where you can fill out the form and we'll be in touch with you if you're interested. Um, the Exchange Online Backup and Restore. Now this is something new. Um, it is an optional added service. Right, so the Exchange Online and Backup, uh, for right now, uh, this is um, backing up all of the uh, Office 365 folders in your mail. It's backing up all of the calendar. It's backing up your emails. It's CDP, it's Continuous Data Protection, uh, where it's, it, in most cases, a lot of cases, it will be backed up before it even hits the target's email account itself. Um, very easy, uh, very inexpensive, um, so we look forward to it. I hear what you said. A lot of people say, Chris, this is great, but I need to back up OneDrive and I also need to back up SharePoint. So we are working on uh, a backup solution that will um, incorporate not just the mail, calendar and the folders from that, but also the complete Microsoft 365 platform. That is coming, but if you're interested in this, we can uh, set you up on this real quick. And uh, again, all shows up on the same invoice um, and uh, you'll be able to manage this uh, from Enscape itself. Very good. <clears throat> and training, uh, office365training.com, another optional service. I know many of you take advantage of this. And for those of you who don't, uh, I would really highly recommend you take a, a, a test drive. Uh, again, this is a very deep dive, over 2,700 snackable videos. If you could maybe click on the Office 365 one over there and um, you know just drill into it, you'll see that this is really done um, with the Azure Microsoft 365 Teams MVPs. These are not Microsoft videos. These are done by Microsoft uh, MVPs. And you can go ahead and assign these licensures. You can, um, you know, you can assign tests or quizzes if you would like. Um, a lot of you is really awesome suggestions is you're like, hey, can we make this part of the onboarding? When the onboarding template, can we assign, you know, training to the different templates that they must take the you know uh, uh for people like accountants they must take the latest uh training around excel or whatever it might be can you can you automate all of that so we are in the midst of doing that um right now uh but in the meantime though you can connect here and manage everything and it's gamified so you'll see um uh, badges being presented and a little awards. Um, I'm still a newbie, yep. but uh, I, I need to get back on my training. <laughs> yeah, exactly, newbie. Um, so yeah, but there's a, it's a real, uh, a real great LMS uh, learning management system for all things Office 365. Um, and of course, we we have a tile here. More to come. Check back soon. We want you to be engaged with us, um, and please give us your feedback. Um, let us know what we can do to improve um, and let us know, I, I guess, in our survey at the end that you'll receive, we'll, we'll be asking what other SaaS um, providers would you like us to integrate with? Um, we have our list that we're targeting, but we'd like to make sure that it's aligned with your list. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's the biggest thing for us is um, what we're seeing is, you know, the, 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 our customers are saying, look, Chris, we're managing a lot more than just Microsoft SaaS. What it is it can you uh, offer? There's so many SaaS applications out there. We want to go with the ones. We want to start integrating the ones that you uh, are, you know, our members say, look, this is the ones that we use the most, and that's where we'll start. So, um, Kevin, do you want to go ahead and put up that um, survey? Because I think that's what we, we are next. Is that correct? And the survey will go out after. Oh, it's going out after. Okay, <laughs> I apologize. So uh, I'm sorry about that. So you'll be getting a survey, and it's really important, if you could, to help us distinguish what um, SaaS applications you would like to have this included in. Mm -hmm. um, 
Do you have any questions? Well, we, had, we had quite a few. I think we answered many of them because okay. we had some repeat questions that were similar, mm -hmm. but uh, from there. Uh, if there's any other questions, okay. So what's the to-do here? What are we going to ask everybody to do here? So, um, yep, we'd like everybody, if you haven't already done so, please visit uh, platform.inscape365.com slash customer hyphen welcome. And that's a one-time setup. Uh, as the global administrator, you'll need to consent to the application and uh, confirm your billing information. Uh, that's only for where are we supposed to send uh, the invoices to, um, it's, you're not signing up for anything new. Uh, let me just stress that. And if you have any other questions, uh, would like um, a one-on-one -on -one, uh, review of the platform, uh, please reach out to Melissa, uh, your success manager. She'll help uh, get a, a, another one-on-one -on -one set up with you and, and we'll go over anything, uh, any other questions you have. Excellent, excellent. Um, so let me just ask a question that somebody hasn't, nobody's asked yet. So is there a time frame on how long we're going to keep this open uh, before we force to move to the new system? Look at Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just asked it. Right. So uh, CSP Boss is still uh, alive and, and well, and you can continue to use it. Uh, we are going to sunset that application, and uh, you will be uh, using Inkscape. Um, most likely that sunset will be at the end of next month in February, but we do have an overlap. So if you're just not ready for the change, that's okay. You can, can use CSP Boss for a short, short period of time. And then the other was Inkscape 365. If you're just using Inkscape 365, we're going to be able to keep that open. But again, yes. what we're trying to do is just get to one single login where you can get to everything. Uh, but we're not trying to force anybody, uh, you know, off of what they're used to. But at the same time, it's also tougher for us to manage multiple things. So that's where we're bringing it in. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you there. Uh, D Doug, I was very impressed with the new features. Thank you, Doug. Uh, David Regis, can we add other training videos to the training portal? Is it just for Microsoft? Hey, David, we can take that offline. But the answer is absolutely. You can add more training videos uh, into the LMS if you would like. Um, it's a it's a little it's a it's a, it's a variation of what we have, um, but we can absolutely do that, David. We can, as a matter of fact, many of our users add their own content to that LMS, and you can put tests on there and everything else, and it's a web-based LMS, so uh, no problem doing that, David. Uh, but thank you for joining, David. Um, Okay, well, look at that, man. We are in here at 254. I told you this group is efficient. <laughs> um, anyway, so listen, guys, thank you so much for the business. I Hopefully, you like where we're going with the platform. Uh, stay tuned. We got a lot more things on the roadmap, um, and we're very excited uh, about the future and helping you guys in your journey um, regarding SaaS management. Kevin, thank you so much. Robin, thank you. Melissa, thank you. And uh, all of you, thank you guys so much for your business. Have a great day.